my channel. We are here for the second video in December's mini series, which is on Jane and John Doe's. You guys seemed super excited last week when I announced that this was the topic for this month, so I'm excited to keep going, and ironically enough, you guys suggested this one and the ones I already had planned out for the rest of the month, so pretty stoked about this, but I do quickly want to apologize for the lack of video on Saturday. You guys know I'm crazy about consistency when it comes to uploading my videos, um, but my laptop really went crazy. I personally am deciding to blame it on Mercury and Retrograde right now. I have a video on that if you have no idea what I'm talking about, but a lot of different issues happened and I was not satisfied with the way things were going. I didn't want to rush it and then put up a bad video, so I decided to save it for this week. But now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into today's Jane Doe case, which is the case of Little Miss Panasofsky. On February 19th of 1971, two hitchhikers were walking along the road and they stumbled across a body floating underneath an overpass in Lake Panasofsky in Florida. And this is, in fact, how she ended up getting her name. But her real name is unknown to everyone still. These two hitchhikers called police who immediately showed up to the scene and were able to retrieve the body from the water. It was extremely decomposed. It was not recognizable at this point. So their main goal was first of all, finding out what happened to this girl. And second of all, finding out who she was. She had on a green shirt, green plaid pants, and she had on this green floral poncho. She had a white gold watch on her wrist, a necklace on, and then a small golden ring on her right ring finger with a transparent stone inside of it. Immediately their biggest thought was that she had been murdered because there was a belt found tightly strapped around her throat. They performed an autopsy on the woman's body and found that she had been floating in the water for about 30 days and they did determine that she did die of strangulation. There was once again the men's size 36 belt tightly wrapped around her neck. They believed that she was killed somewhere off site and then thrown over the particular bridge into the water, meaning she had been floating in that same area for roughly a month without being discovered, which is absolutely terrifying to think about. However, she had no identification on her and there didn't seem to be a missing persons reported with her description. Granted, again, she was very badly decomposed, so that's when they decided to start some sketches. They did an original sketch and no one came forward, so they decided to do an age progression sketch of what she might have looked like had she been a little bit younger in hopes that someone would recognize this woman and come to get her. Because of how badly decomposed she was, they tried their hardest to nail down any clues about her and they thought she possibly came from Native American or European descent. They started posting flyers everywhere they possibly could. At this point, word of mouth was the fastest way things traveled. There weren't things like Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or Twitter, so they really relied heavily on putting up these posters and reaching out to the media to spread this woman's story. Hundreds and hundreds of leads came in, mainly from parents thinking that this woman was possibly their daughter that had gone missing. At this point, they weren't really able to nail down the age that they thought that this woman was. She looked to be an older teen to possibly a young adult, but technology was very, very different back then, so they couldn't really give a definite answer. Every lead that they came across at this point had come to a dead end, so she was then buried and nothing had been answered. In February of 1986, her body was exhumed in hopes that they could gather a few more bits of information about her in order to determine who exactly she was. Um, this isn't something that's very uncommon for Jane and John Doe cases. They are usually exhumed a couple of times. I've looked at some where they have been exhumed upwards of about 10 times. Um, usually as technology advances, they will decide to take these people back out and really go through their bodies again and use different techniques. And it often does lead to more answers, which is exactly what happened in this case. She was believed to be between 17 and 24 years old at the time of her death, weighing in at about 115 pounds. She had dark brown hair, brown eyes, and extremely prominent cheekbones. They also guessed her height was somewhere between 5 foot 2 inches and 5 foot 5 inches. At some point in her life, she had received an extensive amount of dental work. She had a ton of different fillings, and she even had a porcelain crown on one of her upper right teeth. They then looked at her pelvis and determined that she had at least had one child and possibly even had a second. 
They also noticed that one of her ribs had been broken, which to them didn't really indicate much about her life when she was alive, um, but they did think that this led to more information on her killer. They do believe the killer had knelt down on her and put their knee on her rib cage in order to tighten the belt, and unfortunately that's when one of her ribs became broken. These were the answers they got, but still it didn't get them much further. But when it comes to Jane and John Doe cases, you take any possible little bit of information you can get. Then again, her body was exhumed in 2012 and they really hit the jackpot on this one. They were finally able to determine that she was of European descent. They examined Harris lines in her bones, which are basically lines that indicate that at some point her growth had been stunted, and an orthopedic surgery had been performed that was known as the Watson-Jones technique. It had been done on her right ankle around the age of 16. They determined that this surgery wouldn't have been done unless she had some sort of chronic instability. Struggle walking when she was growing up as a child, she probably would have needed a lot of assistance, she would have fallen a lot, she more than likely fractured or sprained her ankle multiple times on that particular leg. So that was huge for them because that could possibly mean someone out there took her to the doctor multiple, multiple times. And considering she had this surgery done, they thought, hey, here's a great idea. Let's go ahead and put her picture in different medical journals. That way doctors around the country, doctors around the world can be looking through these different journals and maybe the one who did her surgery will come forward. However, after all of this happened, still no one came forward to claim that they had seen this woman or even knew who she was. Her remains were then sent to a geologist at the University of Florida where the isotopes in her teeth would be examined. And I found this incredibly intriguing while I was looking this case up. Geologist George Kamenov used a method which pretty much looked at the different elements and how they left traces in our bodies as we grow. In this case, he was looking at the amount of lead and the different lead patterns that were in her teeth. When you are a child, lead collects in your teeth until eventually the enamel seals it off and it leaves almost like a fingerprint. Depending on how much lead is used in the area that you are living in, it can be a huge indicator as to where you grew up. Which I think is absolutely insane that we can find that sort of information from something so incredibly random. He was able to find that she had spent most of her childhood and young adult life somewhere near the sea in southern Europe, more than likely in the Greek city of Athens or one of the small villages surrounding it. He even thinks it was possible that she was still living there up to a year before she was unfortunately murdered. Which means that at some point she had lived over in Greece and came over to America for unknown reasons. After researching further and looking at other lead patterns and other people's teeth all around Europe, they narrowed it down to the fishing port of Lavrion, which was just outside of Athens. This opened up a ton of different possibilities as to what exactly happened to her and as much as you would hope these answers would narrow things down. Unfortunately, I feel like it just opened up a lot more possibilities. This girl was found in America, which turned out to be a country that she probably was just visiting. So no wonder no one had come forward to claim her because maybe the people who loved her and cared about her and would have come and wanted to know what happened weren't even in America. They more than likely were in Greece where she was from. She had at least been in the United States for about 30 days, but they figured that she hadn't been here for longer than maybe two months. They realized she more than likely came to the United States to go to an epiphany ceremony, which is a Greek Orthodox celebration that basically celebrates the baptism of Jesus. And interestingly enough, she was found about 75 miles away from this particular celebration. It's always held in the first week or two of January, which is right around the time that her body was discovered. So this is what led them to believe that she came over here for this particular celebration. Again, it's a Greek Orthodox celebration, she came from Greece. She was only about 75 miles away from Tarpon, Florida, which is exactly where the celebration is held. Thousands and thousands of people from Greek descent, a bunch of different Greek Americans come to this. It's a huge deal. Then a crime show aired in Greece that brought on a massive, massive tip. 
A woman came forward claiming to know exactly who Little Miss Panasofsky was. She claimed that the newest facial reconstructions looked like a girl that she went to school with, went by the name of Constantina. They had attended prep school together in Kefisia, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it is a suburb of Athens, still generally in the same area, and they had both attended the school to become domestic help. It was a trade school, you went to learn different things. Well, the interesting, interesting thing about this particular school is that one once you finish the courses, they sent you on a two-year work visa to either the United States or to Australia. The school was funded by the International Organization for Immigration, which is how all of this came about, and the girl says that she was separated from Constantina, who was her friend, when Constantina, who she thought was Little Miss Panasofsky, was sent to the United States and she was sent to Australia, and upon further digging, the timing in which they both were sent to these places was around the exact same time that Little Miss Panasofsky was found in the river. She also said that two other girls from the school that she was friends with that also resemble Little Miss Panasofsky had gone missing at the exact same time and no one knew of their whereabouts, but this was dismissed, at least one of these women was, when her daughter called into the show, said that her mother was alive and well and hadn't even been sent to America, she was sent to Australia, so that's when the validity of this woman's statement kind of came into question. I have seen pictures of Constantina, which I have already put up, and I will see if I can find a comparison picture. I do think there are a lot of similarities here, and I find it very interesting, but I am not exactly sure how to feel about it. They tried to find Constantina's family, and no one has been found and no one has come forward. The woman who went to school with her said that her brother had been in the Navy located in Lavrion, so she did have family and as they saw she at least had one child so she also has children somewhere yet not a single person can be located. They've tried to connect Constantina with little Miss Panasofsky but without the family they have nothing but this tip. When it comes to these sorts of situations, you know, as much as we want to trust scientific methods, they can be wrong. Um, there's always room for error. For example, you know, with her sketches, her sketches in the very beginning look like a completely different person to her new sketch. You know, it looks completely different. So that's what's almost so scary about these Jane and John Doe cases is we look at this picture and that's kind of who we decide this person is. But it is very likely they looked completely different if their body was found unrecognizable. Putting a face on these people that could not be their face, and I don't know why that freaks me out so bad and does not sit well with me. And I, I will say a lot of the times these sketches are spot on and they are awesome. But just to see how in one case the picture can change so drastically is just, it's crazy to me. Geologists said that even with finding these traces of lead in her teeth, it could be possible that she was in fact from the United States. This whole entire time, you know, we do believe she was from Europe, but he said he could have gotten the same signals in her teeth had they just used European leaded paint on the outside of their home in America. So there's really no telling. It's just a bunch of guesses, which makes it that much more confusing and infuriating to solve. I have no idea what to think about this case. I think it's so insane that these people can just go missing and nobody claims them. I think the story that she was from Greece holds a lot of weight. You have to keep in mind her age as well. She was between the age of 17 and 24, which means she probably had her children fairly young. It's very, very possible that these, this one child or possibly two children were given up to another family in Greece. As a mother, it's just not very likely that she would have had these children and then decided to go to a school that she knew would have sent her to a different country for two years and she would have been away from her children. So to me, I think the most likely theory is that both these children were given away. They probably won't be able to help answer anything other than possible DNA tests. Um, but I don't think any children out there would have been looking for her. I just find it strange though because there should be a paper trail if little Miss Panasofsky is Constantina. There should be evidence at the school of where exactly she was sent. Um, I mean, they work with immigration. Those papers are not going to be lost anywhere. Why didn't the people she was supposed to be working for say something if this girl didn't show up for work? You know, I feel like this should be easily traceable and it's just not, and it's irritating. There were people that were relying on her, the school, wherever she was sent to work, you know, 
people somewhere were expecting her to show up and she didn't and no one reported it and that does not sit very well with me unless maybe the person she was working for is the one who murdered her. And that brings us to the whole entire fact that the murderer has never been found. The murder has never been brought to justice and, you know, this person could still be walking around somewhere in Florida, which is a disgusting feeling, if I'm being honest. So there's not many other theories in this case as to who Little Miss Panasofsky could possibly be. Do you think that she is Constantina? Do you think that this Grease story holds any sort of weight to it? Or do you think everyone is just completely off? Do you think it was possibly the people she was working for that murdered her? Or do you think it was just a random act? Let me know down in the comments below. I can't wait to see what you have to say. And on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and go guys. Don't forget to check me out on all of my social media sites I have listed down below. Hit that subscribe button, become a member of my little family. We are at 85,000 subscribers, that is 15,000 away from 100,000 oh crazy madness crazy crazy madness but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye